Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Normal World. I'm your host, Dave Landau, and joining me as usual, please welcome Angela. Hi. How are you? Great. Excited. Good. And it's sitting in today for Quarter Black, who is out in Las Vegas. Please welcome the return of Matt McClowry. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> and where can we see you besides right now? Uh, I'm going to be with you in Tacoma, April 19th and uh, April 18th and 19th. And then I'm going to be with you in Spokane, April 25th and 26th. And since all of those shows are going to be completely sold out, uh, I will also be headlining uh, the 27th. And then at the end of next month, I will be with you in Hilarities also. And that'll sell out too. So I'm also headlining the Thursday and Sunday if you guys are. In old Cleveland. Yep. Yes. And also, uh, please check out my special, A Prison Tenet, is now officially available on Amazon Tubi and Comedy Genius. Check it out. I like the little the little art there. And it's like a tattoo. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah, it's like my little tramp stamp, <laughs> which I do. I do have. Also, uh, that's it for me. Well, no, this weekend I'm going to be at the Orpheum in Twin Falls, Idaho. I do come out, Idaho. I mean, God. All right. <laughs> Joining us today, he is the front man and songwriter for one of my favorite bands. Please welcome... Steve Jackson Ow! from the Pie Tasters. Hey How are you, sir? For having me, great, great. Oh, dude, uh, where can we see the Pie Tasters? Or you? What? Where, where, where can we see your upcoming dates? Uh, April twenty sixth in Leesburg, Virginia. The twenty seventh, we're up in Sayreville, New Jersey. In May, we're heading down to Florida for a few shows. Um, June, we're in Pennsylvania and Maryland. ThePieTasters.com. Cool. Check, check that for the tour dates. And yeah. yeah, right there's the Auto Bar. Uh, oh, yeah. Right there. So that's June 8th at the Auto Bar. If you happen to be in the Baltimore, go check them out. I'm telling you, you're going to love the show. It's unbelievable. And <coughs> what? Did someone say pie tasting? Who, who are you? <laughs> I am Jean Benet Pasquale, the pie taster. I travel the world to taste pies. I'm not Very doing this today. I'm not Very doing it. I'm not doing this today. <laughs> Give me a chance to showcase my show, please. All right. Do you have a flyer or something? Yes, I have a flyer. Please show it. <laughs> okay. It's called Jean Benet Pasquale's I Love Pies. You just get get a, get him out of here. I believe <laughs> I, I want you be to be on the show. I want you to the hurt him this time. time. Hurt him. No. I <laughs> no. Like to remain the poor chef. On the show. I apologize. We <laughs> accidentally booked a pie taster. Third time in a row now this happened. I know. I hope you heard him. How did the band get the name the Pie Tasters? Uh, we, um, as all third wave ska bands, we aspired to be from England. And uh, uh, these British friends of ours that were living in the U.S. for the summer, they were from northern England and uh, in Northern English parlance, pie taster means fat guys. <laughs> and so when we would come over, they would, uh, they'll eat your pies, they tell you lies, you won't believe the bastard size there, the pie tasters. And like, oh, that's cool. These English guys are, we're, <laughs> so we, uh, like kind of in the vein of that band Bad Manners, we thought, that, oh, this will be good. People will think we're from England and give us some cred in the ska scene. That's awesome. Well, you, it's interesting because your band is soul, reggae, punk, ska. Like, it's a whole, it's like a mishmash, which is what I love about it. I mean, you definitely have like the ska feel, but you have, I mean, the punk feel. You have, you have the soul feel. Like, what, why do you, I, I shouldn't say why, you've reinvented a sound. <laughs> we're, That's what we're, I love about your band. Like, you can't really pinpoint to exactly what it, what it is. Yeah. We're, we're a great party band. We're a great bar band. And, uh, like all bands, you start playing covers, and then uh, you realize that a lot of the ska bands were playing covers of Motown stuff and Stack Soul, and you know, then you kind of branch out, and we would try and play real obscure uh, covers, and people would think that we wrote the songs, and so uh, it made it easier than writing. Well, Led Zeppelin songs. made a career out of that one. There you go. Yeah, that one, we haven't been sued yet. No, no, it's uh, that's that's awesome. Well, so you kind of started though as a party band with no intention of actually making it in music. No, and that's why we're 
we're pure of soul. Uh, we, we started with the worst business model and that's 10 people, uh, <laughs> a, a three piece power pop or a singer songwriter is the best way to go into music. But we decided to bring all of our friends and bought an old school bus and drove around in circles, getting free beer and phone numbers. And it was your first tour, right? Yeah, we... Uh, you drove. broke up as a result of that, correct? Yeah, we, we lost several members who thought we were insane. <laughs> and they're all uh, well-to-do with beach houses and things like that. And we're still driving around in circles and old buses. And <laughs> <laughs> so were, you guys met in... Was it in Washington, D.C. where you guys were founded? In- yeah, we were all suburban Washington, D.C. kids and uh, went to school at Virginia Tech. And Okay. Uh, so, you know, put together the party band and... Was it the slug? I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> the, slugs. So the slugs. The slugs. That was, was your first... early iterations. Okay. Uh, the the dance crashers, but then there was already a band called the dance hall crashers. So we, we there was a f- few different names before we, we hit the scene and started releasing music. And... What was your first moment that you kind of broke? Oh, well, th- there was this... Label it is a reward. It doesn't necessarily have to be what other, you know, but what you loved. Well, validation, you yeah. know, it's like the, when that comedian that you open for recognizes how funny you are, it's that yes. kind of thing. And so we have been driving around and, you know, playing bars and parties and moon records out of New York decided that they were going to put out a couple of our records. And we're like, Oh, we've arrived. Moon records is going to put out our, our albums. And so I did a couple albums with them and then, Tim from Rancid uh, started a label called Hellcat. And oh, Armstrong, yeah. yeah I have Armstrong. one of I have his Fender Hellcat. Well, yeah, I don't know how to play go. it, but I have it. <laughs> anyway, Get your son some lessons. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, um, so you know, uh, bit by bit, uh, uh, Dickie from the Boston's uh, took us on tour right when their big album uh, "Let's Face It" broke big, and so we got to see the world with the Boston's while they were doing. Uh, the impression that I get their their big giant hit. So ninety six. Yeah, it's yeah, ninety six, yeah. ninety seven. That was I graduated eighth grade in ninety seven, and that was our class song. Oh, was it really? <laughs> yeah. Well, it was huge. That's what got me into ska. Yeah, it was, and it was great to ride on these coattails. Uh, you know, it, it, it was just really fun to be a part of all of that, and um, got to tour with Joe Strummer and the Mescaleros and Reverend Horton Heat. I was going to ask about Reverend Horton Heat. I was a big fan of uh, yeah. Liquor in the Front hey. or Liquor in the Back, and uh, it, that that was the first album I found. It was at Harmony House, and it was just this random. Sound, but I ended up loving him. It, incredible songwriter and performer um you know what a great stage presence and what a great show and we did a north american tour with him and uh scott his drummer i think is in dallas and no longer plays drums with them but okay um yeah so you know just got to see the world uh, uh instead of joining the military we got to do it with bands and it was What's the best? Yeah, definitely. And in 2003, it had to be good because you were actually chosen to back James Brown, which we have a picture of him. And uh, that's uh, (laughs) Darren Soward. uh, I don't know what what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's doing. (laughs) But how did it how I remember him? (laughs) How was it to work with PCP? Yes. How is it? (laughs) Yes. How is it? Well, he like to smell doing. crack. <laughs> he had cleaned up his act by that point, yeah. and uh, he his management wanted him to do um, these. Uh, you know, the radio stations would have their holiday shows, and so he was going to do DC and Philadelphia and New York, and he didn't want to bring his band. And so um, the local WHFS is a local alternative station, and they contacted us, and we had just been on tour in Europe, and at the end of the night, we would get on the bus and listen to Live at the Apollo every night for some reason. Yeah. And, you know, it was just this great five-week tour, and we get back, and two days later, hey, James Brown wants you guys to back him up. Do you think you can do this? And we're like, yeah, sure. And so we sent a karaoke version of uh, four or five songs, Two days later, James Brown and his guitar player are at this little studio in Fairfax, Virginia, where we worked out. And uh, he's, you know, when I do this, you hit this part of the song. And when I spin around on one leg, you do this part of the song. And when I point here, you do this. And then he left and we worked for another three hours with the guitar player. And the next night we're at the MCI Center in front of 20,000 people playing Sex Machine with James Brown. And it was incredible. Were you- so you being a front man, was he the best front man you had ever seen? Without a doubt. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, there's got to be few co- that compare. 
He he had um, injured he, his leg. Did he do the thing where he works the critique of you into the song as he's doing it, where he tells you to hit the bass and tells you? To... We we knew ahead of time not to, to screw oh, up because okay. you know he's legendary for docking people's pay if they miss a part a part of the song, and so we were on our best behavior. And and when we rehearsed, he said as long as we didn't really screw up, he wouldn't he wouldn't hold us to. Uh, Cause you know, we were feeling guys, but, but he had injured his leg and, um, he rode out onto stage in a golf cart and he got up on stage and we're all just kind of vamping <laughs> and he pops the brace off of his leg and spins around on one foot, you know, and it just became <laughs> James Brown. And, and I mean, it, it was incredible. And the next night he played with Dave Matthews band and then the next night it was Lenny Kravitz's band. And then he was on Howard Stern and we listen and He's uh, Howard Stern's trying to talk about these other shoes. Howard, I don't want to talk about those guys. I want to talk about my boys at Pie Tasters. The sound in 1960, and we're just like, <laughs> holy crap! I can't, I cannot believe this is happening. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's got to be the greatest moment imaginable when the the, I mean, arguably, but really not arguably, the greatest soul singer of all time drops your name. It's mm. incredible. And then whenever he would come back to DC, he'd put us on the guest list and you know, we're in the VIP section with the mayor and you know, this whole contingent of in DC dignitaries. Was and, he still doing crack? No, this not is Marion Barry. This I know I'm a, kidding. This is all three. I wish. <laughs> yeah, I wish. You wish it was Marion Barry. Dude, you would have had a night of your life. <laughs> Marion Barry and James Brown is not something a white man would survive. <laughs> uh, yeah. Both of them had cleaned up their act by, by the time. I, yeah. By the time you landed there. Yeah. It just sounded like a, like a big name comic you get to open for except the part where he keeps his promises it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. a good point yeah that must be nice to open for a big name and then do it again um so <laughs> well you toured with like you have some amazing you you worked with the ramones we yeah we we played with the ramones and i like specifically i you know i like i like johnny but i joey struggled with ocd do you have any moment where you you had to deal with that no and by the time we played with them they were it was like their farewell kind of tour and we were doing lots of bad things in the dressing room and they were waiting for their salmon to show up before the show so we so again, you're getting into rock and we they're... missed out on all of the good you know those kind of good stories and uh, we were doing it's still the remote I mean, you can yeah. ask me about my marriage if you want ocd story <laughs> Good yeah. point. Yeah. How is how is Deity at home? <laughs> She's doing great. I mean, I had to sp spray down a suitcase with Lysol this week. I know you did. Par for, <laughs> par for the course. You know, there's trade offs, as yeah. Thomas Sowell says. It's no true. solutions, just trade offs. Yeah. Well, they hated. Uh, I know the Ramones. I believe it was end of the century that uh, was produced by Phil Spector. Like they hated Phil Spector. Which I mean, when somebody points yeah, I've heard on at you to get you to sing better. <laughs> you tend to not like somebody. But what's uh what's your take on that album and I'm and what's your favorite Ramones album? Uh I you know, I like Beat on the Brat and uh the KKK took my baby away and yeah. some of those classics, <laughs> you know. But if Phil Spector wants to pull a gun on me and tell me to sing better, I come on, bring it on. Let's, I mean, I think he's dead now, but yeah. um, I would have welcomed that. Uh, Just a guy in a crazy wig. Yeah. I mean, he makes you a go-getter. You know, I'm hungry. So yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to work for it. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. I just, it, it's just, that's one of those bands where you, you worked with no doubt. Uh, yeah. We, we, we've crossed paths with lots. I mean, in, you know, in the nineties, the ska thing was ridiculous and it's massive. So, um, yeah. It, uh, we, well, there was Real Big Fish, oh, Boss Tones. Them, Boss Tones. Boss Tones was my my favorite. I, I um, I'm trying to think of like who the big because there was like three or four. I think Bare Naked Ladies attempted. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't throw them. In no, the no, no. And I don't mean to offend you. No, your kind. no. And I think Sublime too is probably had the biggest chart success, and they were more on like the reggae kind of mm. side of things. But they were definitely lumped in with with ska. I just they they became a lot at that point on MTV. There were a lot of three word bands: Cherry Pop and Daddy, Squirrel, oh, yes. Squirrel Nut Zippers. Yep, they were doing their own thing though. I remember. Well, they were all kind of doing the the same look for a second, yeah. and then, uh, well, not Sublime, but Sublime was Sublime was so specifically Orange County rock yeah. it almost seemed that it. Just, I mean, it bled into the rest of the country, and we all liked it. But I don't know if there was a, something you could relate it. It's kind of like what you guys do, honestly. Like I wouldn't go, you do ska, right? When you necessarily 
because you do these different versions that, I mean, I guess these other bands do as well. Well, and back then it was way more of a specific genre and we were aware that we weren't playing traditional ska. And, you know, there's this band Hepcat that's yeah. the greatest um, ska band ever. And Greg Lee just passed away recently and uh, it's a big loss. And, uh, but so at the time when people would talk to us about ska, oh, we're not a ska band, we're ska rock and soul. We, we tried to, you know, distance ourselves a little bit from that. Um, but, uh, we did do a big tour with cherry pop and daddies and we've been friends with those guys forever. And it was at the height of the swing revival ah, and we knew their audience it, was going to hate us. Okay. And usually, you know, opening, you get $250, but it's the exposure. And so they offered us this big tour and we told our management, the audience is going to hate us. And he's like, well, don't worry. We'll just ask for an insane amount of money. They'll never you know, go, go for it. Well, of course they said, sure. <laughs> and so we had to do the tour and we did five weeks of people in zoot suits, like giving us the finger for 40 <laughs> minutes every night. And it was just like no reflection on Cherry Papa Daddy's cause they're a great band and they're good dudes, but their audience could not have cared less about the pie taste or something. Yeah. We can't swing dance to this. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's crazy when you're dressed like the band, like you're not just wearing a shirt of the band. It's like you're wearing, if you have a suit with an elastic waistband, you should just punch yourself in the oh, face. Dude, it's, it's no worse look. Yeah. You're not, you're not in the Mexican mob. Yeah, in the 1940s. No. <laughs> There's a reason to have that. Not Malcolm uh, X before his awakening. Exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's exactly who it yeah, was. Yeah. Before he admitted he was black. Yeah. And back when he went by red. <laughs> <laughs> um, with with that, like, did you ever have somebody flat out just hate what you did then, and uh, almost to the point that you were in danger? Uh, well, it's funny you should mention. <laughs> somebody whipped out a Tommy gun at them. <laughs> Thank God, no, but it could have been worse. Uh, we're we're the bad boys of ska, and uh, we, we tell stories about life, and they're not necessarily um, how-to manuals of how to live your life, but we have some songs about off-color characters and situations, and during the performance of one such song in Gainesville, Florida, um, a young man who was uh, virtue signaling to some uh, females came up and informed me that what I was doing was a hate crime. Mm. And I, you know, I couldn't really hear what he was saying. And I leaned forward and it was a tall stage. And I leaned down and I said, what, what did you say? And he goes, hate crime. And he sprayed mace in my face oh. and I could feel the mace like in the back of my eyeballs. And I was like, God damn it, <laughs> dude, that's not good. And that's a hate crime. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> Were you on yeah. stage? We were playing. A, we were playing a show. We were playing a song that he didn't like. And so I told the, the, the band to just like play an instrumental. And the bass player and I jumped out and chased him down and beat him for the remainder of the song. <laughs> Best and show ever. The, the virtue signaling. If you're going to mace Male someone. feminist had mace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what kind of guy has mace? The guy who would. <laughs> he was blowing his rape whistle while we were punching him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we, we were very happy that uh, one of our friends said a week later she saw him at the grocery store and he had one of those arm casts with a stick that holds your arm oh, out. Yes, so you we, know it's going to be a while. Definitely connected with him and I, I, it was worth it for the story. Well, that's the best because you know he's got to go to a rehab and oh, learn yeah. how to redo this. <laughs> Plenty of time to think about it. Yeah, and you know he also didn't have sex with any no. girls that night because he's a male feminist. He didn't. Like, even if he wasn't hurt. <laughs> well, and they were probably all lesbians, so they oh, of course. They didn't want anything to do with him. And yeah, no, nobody cared that he did that. He's like, I'm going to go show him with my mace. Which song was it? Pleasure Bribe. Oh, okay. About, okay. Uh, and, and I did not write this song, but the I think the part he didn't like was, I've got uh, $5 to not look at your face. So that probably... Can you imagine being in Gainesville, Florida with that football team and everything that goes on there? And I forgot the name of the guy who killed... Uh, who ended up going, Aaron Rodgers. No, no, not Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. <laughs> no, no. I can't believe you said that. You made me... No. Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. Good. I can't wait for the 800 Some vaccine. people would agree comments. with you about Aaron Rodgers. That's true. But yeah, Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> that, man you, <laughs> that man you beat was Aaron Hernandez. <laughs> Changed his whole outlook on everything. 
He's yeah, like, oh man, I don't know what I. Well, it's like when you're in the I'm south gay, and somebody's like, member. "Don't disrespect women," or that's racist. And you're like, "Why here? Here? <laughs> yeah, like, are you sure? Because yeah. your wife has a shiner." <laughs> well, they'll come up to you and say the weird. Remember in North Carolina? Yeah, they came up to me. Goes, uh, you know that Amish joke you said was a bit too far. <laughs> I'm like, are you are you serious? <laughs> They're never going to see it <laughs> no, or ever. hear it. But he was genuinely upset. And it was when that show Amish Mafia Amish was Mafia, on. Yeah. So it was just basically about like, like I don't know, so it was probably the horse's head joke, something. He enjoyed the rest of the show. He says, I just felt that was in poor taste. Yeah, like, yeah. and he's wearing overalls and he's like six, <laughs> six and a half feet tall. Yeah. And Matt and I are like, we both heard that, right? <laughs> this is at a show where a guy motorboated a woman he didn't know. That was the cl- that was your closer. And I that's how the show. that's how great of a show that <laughs> was. was. Yeah, that was at the uh, comedy club that was uh, part of a chain comedy. It's a comedy zone. It's fucking. It's a comedy zone. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's not there anymore. Yeah. That one, <laughs> but it was uh, in an old blockbuster, and so the uh, the the sign was it shaped. Was the, the sign was shaped like a blockbuster logo, but the to to make it make sense, it said the hottest ticket in town, which is their slogan nowhere else. None of their other locations. <laughs> <laughs> Written on the ticket shape. Yes, yes. And then you just walk into this very narrow room that used to be a blockbuster and go, oh, I'm going to just eat shit for the next 20 <laughs> minutes. Well, that was the one where I walked in and I don't even get a word out of my mouth. And there's just woman who is still eating nachos and is balding, has female pattern baldness uh, from malnutrition, just looks at me and goes, you're crazy. <laughs> oh like, yeah i got mad yeah and i'm like i gotta be here 25 more minutes <laughs> neat i was in the back behind glass where they could see me you know yeah. and then the woman the, the, you would check out this Actually, is a woman who's old enough section. to have an adult daughter there because i remember the daughter coming up to us and saying like i thought you were funny but you know you kind of brought it up on your, uh, on yourself and, and you and you said by going on stage that's <laughs> literally all he did just like, well, yeah. you never know what's going to set them off yeah. people are the dumbest when it comes to that stuff what's the worst experience you've had on a stage being maced oh yeah <laughs> well, I just asked you. like there's one that's way worse you're like well it would no. probably be the gang rape. I got really drunk in Malmo, Sweden one time and the uh, the audience was there for the disco show that uh, started at oh, 11 you don't want to mess with we that. played the early Sweden. show and no I got really drunk and uh, and that that was a bad one. I, I took Xanax thinking that it would make me sleep the drunk off, and instead I got up on the tour bus and peed on our trumpet player. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I can only imagine a trumpet. Bunch of, you thought it was. He's like trumpet. Steve. You're not in the bathroom. <laughs> I can only imagine a bunch of glittery blonde Swedes with yeah. roller skates just upset that you're not terrible. Disco. <laughs> and leading to that, you with platform shoes with goldfish in them, <laughs> just just doing wonderful moves while they're doing. It's very eloquent. <laughs> we we had played Germany the night before, and and the club guy gave us this homegrown weed in a Folgers can, and uh, we were assured that it would be no problem going to Sweden with weed. And yeah. we are pulling up on the tour bus, and I'm the only one awake, and I see all these dogs. I'm like, oh my god! And I run in the bathroom and dump it in the toilet and flush it. And then we're pulling away, and the driver said, "Why did you go in the bathroom?" And I told him, he said, "Oh no, it goes straight out." And so <laughs> then I look out the back window, and there are all these dogs standing around this pile of like shit. And Marijuana. It goes Sorry. straight out. That's not a good. <laughs> just, 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 he's like, you look at all the marijuana in this shit. How much are they eating on that bus? Exactly. <laughs> Is that kale? <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. Uh, oh, it's incredible. Um, you, I guess I was asked just because where I'm from, but like you played Detroit. Oh. Did you ever play Harpos? Yeah. Oh boy. Harpos and um, what's the. Is it the majestic or the there's magic, some, magic stick, ma- magic stick, the, majestic, magic the bag, theater, and then the shelter? Oh yeah, the downstairs room, Ann Arbor, and then oh, no, uh, that's the shelter is in uh, that's that's where they is Ann Arbor. Yeah, yeah the, sh- yeah, oh, the we, shelter's where they do the rap battle in Eight Mile, which is under St Andrews Hall. Right, St Andrews, that's, a, great, is that's a, a killer venue. Both of those. Uh, Joe Strummer at St Andrews, the shelter with the pie tasters. <laughs> really <laughs> big room, you know, big and then smaller room for. Uh, Smaller rooms kick ass, though, for acoustics. So one time, oh, yeah, that's a great room. And, so good. Um, yeah. We were, I, we had this old Greyhound bus and we were pulling into the parking lot and this lady ran into us and it was, you know, it was like four in the morning, five in the morning because we had driven all night and she, w- it was an insurance scam and I just gave her money to leave because she was going to call the police <laughs> and the guy at the, at the, uh, at the club is like, no, it's just a scam. You shouldn't have given her any money. And I was like, well, I didn't know. And. <laughs> 
And then uh, the Falcon Club in Hamtramck was oh. this this guy Dean owned the Falcon Club, and we would for some reason we had this we would play Detroit on the first Tuesday of the month, and we'd play Denver on like the third Thursday, and we just spent the rest of the time driving around in circles. And okay, so it was winter time. We we're in Hamtramck, and the bus was getting some work done, and so we were going from Dean's house to the bus place, and we drove past the um, the Falcon Club, and he goes. God damn it. I was like, what's wrong? He goes, they stole my trash can or trash bags. And I was like, your trash bags? And he goes, do you know how much contractor bags cost? And these people had dumped the trash out in the alley and taken the contractor bags. And <laughs> it's like January and it's all frozen. And so we get out and I have to chip up ice in the alley and put the trash into new contractor bags with Dean at the Falcon Club. <laughs> so that's my memory of, of Detroit. Oh, yeah. It's just... It's special. Well, ham tramic, especially because it's like the greatest Polish food. Oh yeah, that you'll ever eat. But then at the same time, at night, you're like, "Why is the road moving?" And you're like, "That's rats. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> something else. It's but. just waving like this." The, when you pulled up to Harpo's, what was your first thought? This is gonna go well. Yeah, <laughs> I think that was the time we pulled in, and at the "Welcome to Detroit" sign, there was a guy with his pants around his ankles pissing, and he just flicked us off. He's always there. <laughs> That's the mayor. <laughs> the mayor. Yeah. He's walking with us. That's Detroit's Ronald McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the shows are always great, and the oh, audience shows up, and they have a good time, and you know, people want to be entertained, whether it's comedy or music, and so as long as they have fun and the music, that's the good thing about that uh, about the, that city is like they mm -hmm. when they love music and all the venues are really dead. And I mean, when you look at the beginning of the punk scene. I mean, you really can't, I mean, Iggy Pop, I mean, you even, I would even say Ted Nugent to a degree, but it was when he was with the Amboy Dukes. Sure. Uh, but all that started in the Grandy Ballroom, I mean, so much of that is punk. Like the MC5 from Detroit. Oh, hell yeah, Motor yeah, City yeah. 5. Yeah, so. Yeah, and yeah. He, I, we just found out. Um, we were just talking about that. Yeah, Wayne Kramer died, I guess, last February, month. February, February. Yeah, yeah, just recently, and I didn't realize he had passed away. Because he was sort of a bucket list person I wanted to interview as well. And uh, yeah, that was a bummer. But yeah, he, they were amazing. Cause they, I mean, they were on stage when like race riots started in the middle of Belle Isle. Like yeah. he's got a great book th about all that stuff where, because I mean, that music was really unacceptable at the time where they were trying to pull that off. Yeah. And they yeah. weren't popular. Oh, and that was like pre-punk almost. Oh, you for know? sure. Um, and then our boys, the the Meat Men, were from up uh, in Michigan. I don't know if you're familiar with. I the am Meat familiar, Men, actually. Tesco V is one of the most hilarious, uh, smartest people I've ever met, and we got to tour with them. And he lived in D.C. for a while. So, but last time we were in Michigan, he came out and That's hung awesome. out. So it was good to catch up with Tesco. Where are you going to go to Michigan again? I'm sure. Yeah, I hope you do. I want to. I want to catch yeah. the show. There's exactly. yeah. There's tons of great venues there that I'm sure people would go to. Um, I, so I would want to ask this, uh, uh, Henry Rollins, you know, I've met him. I've, you know, did you work with him as I don't far know that as anybody's friends with Henry Rollins other than Nina Mackay, but, uh, yeah. I, I have great respect for him and his music and his writing. And yeah. He's actually his stunt double. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if Henry Rollins was as funny as Henry to... Watt Rollins thinks he is. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, I, I, I like Henry Rollins. <laughs> I, I don't. Just, I just think you're funny. You don't. No. What's to like? What's to like? Oh, no. <laughs> don't don't do that. He's in the he's in the market. Oh yeah, he's yeah he's a Blaze subscriber. That were, guy. Oh no, he's not. <laughs> were you influenced? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He's I'll never here. Uh, were you a black fat? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Boy, my favorite kind. That was Freudian. <laughs> when I'm looking for one, it's gonna be a black one. <laughs> Yeah, you, you met him when you walked in. I hope he took care of you. He said what everyone's thinking. Are you a... <laughs> so were you into Black Flag? Yeah. <laughs> we're going to cut that out, right? <laughs> I, I doubt it. I hope we do. Mm -hmm. Actually, we won't because it's a flub, but uh, it's not... He's kind of a guy you like as an idea, and then you pay attention to him, and you're like, this guy sucks. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I think originally... Have you ever read Get in the Van? Of course uh, you haven't. I no, I read. So. No, I read it. I listened to his spoken word, and that's like, oh no, that's different. I like. Exactly. I like the get in the van. Like when you go from being that teenager that worked at an ice cream place yes. to being the lead singer of a band. Yeah, and like that sort of adventure that he took. I think that's a very fascinating. Mm. 
I'm not saying that everything that he's ever done is magic. (laughs) No offense again. It's good you said no to being friends with him. You should have said yes, and it would be less awkward right now. The the reason, yeah. (laughs) And as a teen, I would have loved to have been friends with uh, Henry Rollins. But, you know, we um, had worked our way up. might come in here and put in on his boots and pretend to be taller than me. (laughs) (laughs) He can deadlift more than I can, I'm sure. Not anymore, he can't. He doesn't lift anymore? No. Wait. But, you know, we, we worked hard as a band and, and uh, we were playing a bunch of festivals in Europe and, and Rollins' band was on some of these festivals and we're a fan, uh, you know, the guys in the band, we all like Rollins' band. And so years later, uh, the 930 Club, which is the greatest uh, independent venue in the country as far as I'm concerned, it's in Washington, D.C. And we've played it going back to the 90s every year, at least once a year. And they had this big anniversary party and Henry Rollins was EMC. And Ian MacKay and the Evens were playing, and you know Dave Grohl is there with the uh, members of Foo Fighters, yeah. and you know it's just all these DC luminaries. And uh, before the show, I spoke to the organizer and I said, "Yeah, we did these shows with Henry Rollins, and uh, tried to, you know, you try and work your way in to like, oh, he's going to say, oh, I remember that." And so, in introducing us, he goes out and says, and this band says they've worked with me before, the pie tasters. <laughs> it's like just the, the derision. And like, he just was like, I don't know who the hell these guys are, but they say they worked with me. It's like, oh, thanks, Hank. Yes. <laughs> so kind of you. <laughs> Thank you for living up. You even put me over for. Yeah, he sounds like a guy who would pretend to not have met you before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he, like, we've met a lot of those guys. Well, yeah, like the. Well, essentially, every very in LA guy who's pretending he's not, who likes to pretend he's not LA. Yes, that's that. I will absolutely give you. You're spot mm-hmm. on. From what I've heard, I think it is part of his personality that he just doesn't have a lot of friends and doesn't remember who he's met or whatever. I can I, see I that. It's, yeah. yeah, which is always a good sign of a good person. So I want to get into <laughs> you know James Brown remembered me. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah. So what do you? That's I all mean, I care about. Like if James Brown knows who you are and is mentioning it on Stern, mm, yeah. nothing against old Hank. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm not going to be pretending about? The perfect gene. I can tell you right now. Uh, <laughs> these aren't them, but they did send me a pair, and it's the most miraculous pair of jeans I've ever worn, and I'm not even joking. The perfect gene team gave me this whole script to read, and I'm literally reading it word for word right now, including this sentence. That said, I actually tried the gene, and it's fucking awesome. But in this, uh, still the script, or, oh, sorry, that's why you shouldn't have written anything for me because I can't read. But is this still the script or me? You'll never know. Well, today's I think sponsor. It's the oh, it's the script. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. I just left that out. You know, you know, Perfect Gene, which are awesome when you sent me the genes. Today's sponsor, the Perfect Gene, finally solved all of your denim difficulties. They made it great looking, perfect fitting. And also as comfortable as sweatpants. And I'm not kidding. I feel like a pregnant woman wearing those fake jeans. I love those. When I, when I just slide Gosh. into them. I feel so juicy. And I tried them. I promise. They're what they're paying me. They're paying me to say this. But I'm telling you, they are a delight. What's the secret? A special denim fabric that's super soft. And has the perfect amount of stretch so you can squat. Do yoga. Or just sit around all day. Uh, you know, wearing them or watching TV or other stuff. It's finally time to stop crushing your balls in uncomfortable jeans by going to the sh- shitty jeans. Go to theperfectgene.nyc. Our listeners get 15% off their first order and free shipping, free returns, and free exchanges when they use the code, ready? Dave15. That's Dave15. D- that's me right there and all the bitches looking. <laughs> D-A-V-E-1-5. They're all like, wow, what's that smell? After the per- after you purchase, you're going to get free shipping. Dave, 1-5. It's honestly the nicest pair of jeans I've ever gotten. When I got them, I put them on, and I thought I'd ordered them. I forgot that they had been a sponsor because they were so comfortable, and they were unbelievably comfortable. Go to theperfectgene.nyc. Use code Dave15. Do it right now. And... Just to say, after you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. So please let them know that you heard them from here and support our show. Yeah, guys. We would love that. We're giving you a good show. Least you can do is say where you got your fucking pants. (laughs) Brilliant. All right, anyway. 
So uh, I got to ask this. Were you a fan of, uh, I, did you ever cross paths with Gigi Allen? Uh, I, I didn't, but I had a, I'm friends with this woman and uh, she lived in New York and was, she, she has the framed toilet seat from uh, CBGB's uh, when they closed. She oh, stole God. the toilet seat that's How in all How many diseases? <laughs> she has enough. And, for her. Or she has a very good um, uh, immuno- immunity. Well, that's the ultimate vaccine is the toilet seat from (laughs) CBGB's. But she, um, the movie, you know, uh, the Gigi Allen movie, I can't think of the name of it. Oh, we actually have a trailer for it. It's called Hated. And there's also the Allens. The one that Todd Phillips did is Hated. I think it's Hated. Yeah, because at the end, she's uh, the one hailing the cab for him the night that he dies. Hated. And, um, she has this great story where she, he would come over to her apartment uh, whenever he was playing shows in New York, and he was the only punk rock guy that would ever use a coaster. And he was just super <laughs> really? polite and would he cross just his legs and like ask for a coaster before he put his beard out. He's like covered in his own feces yeah. and bleeding, but he's like, yeah, can I get a coaster? Takes his shoes off at the door. <laughs> this was before the show. So it was before he had sex with his brother and cut himself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but what a gentleman. I mean, that's when punk was punk. Yeah, well, for, oh, yeah. that's a different level of just the self-harm. And Do we have a, a quick clip of the, if people aren't familiar with Gigi, this is a great movie to watch with the fam called Hated. <laughs> If not, oh, they're very slow. They don't like me. <laughs> there you go. That's our guy. I would have to say that uh, it's not funnier than Spinal Tap. It's very, <laughs> it's very heartbreaking how he yeah. was kind of used by his brother. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a book, I, a movie also called The Allens that kind of covers more of that, you know, involving his brother. But yeah, just the self mutilation. And this was the show you would go to. And uh, this is in the movie where they're just like in Brooklyn, I think, in a random warehouse too at the very end before he ends up passing away. Because he was going to kill himself on stage. That was sort of the promise. Mm -hmm. And then you have, uh, you can pull it now, but just so people are familiar with who we're talking about, we also have, uh, that I was curious. He was just grabbing the fans' interest at the end there. (laughs) Was he? Yeah, I think he was. That's right before he punched that lady in the About to get your old fans back, Dave. (laughs) Good. (laughs) That guy just maced him. Right. (laughs) Is that violence towards a woman? Now that's oh, a yeah. cry. I've done way worse. Done. Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that really you is said way issue. worse things than my yeah, wife. I say well, it's horrible things to women. That's nothing. <laughs> Good thing there's not a camera on me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there's no woman there, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. A lot of them are just angry at the TV. Uh, there was also uh, from the germs. Uh, Darby Crash. Darby. And I, I assumed, he, I believe he deliberately OD'd in 1980, so you probably didn't cross paths. No, I was 10. Was that somebody that you, you were like, I know him very well? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to tell those stories. <laughs> <laughs> we started dating when I was eight. Was that? But did that appeal to you at a young age when you're seeing stuff like that in the punk scene? Yeah, that, um, do you, you remember that Decline of the Western Civilization movie that absolutely. chronicled the West Coast punk scene and uh, another state of mind where um, social distortion takes a school bus across country and then it yes. breaks down and the band breaks up? And I mean... That's probably why we bought a school bus and decided to drive across country because that really is a, yeah. It'd be like Mike Ness. You of know? course. I was gonna ask. I thought I read that like you guys were traveling around in a school bus and then in the on the first tour everybody quit. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we got back, they they realized what a what a silly endeavor this was. And yeah, he lost uh, nineteen members of the thirty one piece band <laughs> that he decided to bring. Out. And then we went and bought a more expensive bus. Yes. <laughs> That'll fix everything. Yeah, you're like just now. There's less of us. We need more bus. <laughs> yeah, uh, Darby, uh, uh, Darby um, Crash. What is it? What Crash Darby, Darby Crash? <laughs> I I'm reading a t- yeah Darby Crash. Um, he died actually. I believe that it was the day after John Lennon. Before, oh, wow. the day before, the day before John Lennon, so it never really he never got kind of the oh, man. accolades that he he deserved because obviously the news was taken by oh, he stinks. Yeah, it's not good. Unless you're Gary Condit. Yeah, that's true. I bet you. Uh, I bet you. Um, there's a few celebrities that wish that something big in the news happened the day they died. 
David Carradine's probably top mm-hmm. of that list. Yeah. The guy from NXS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he really wishes it was on 9-11. All the other people that died jerking <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Which is, I think, a lot of people that kill themselves. And, and then you just have to pretend. Accidental. Yeah, and you're like, oh, man, he just couldn't take life anymore. Are you sure? It seemed like he was enjoying it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> died doing what he loved. Squeeze every last drop out of it. around oh, his yeah. neck. <laughs> Well, he was also an, an, an icon of some kind and not just a chef who smoked. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> well, he seemed like kind of a dick. I don't know. No, I'll be honest. I, I, it's like, no, I get it. You're, uh, you're, you're miserable and you work downtown <laughs> in a restaurant. You have the greatest job in the world. Yeah, yeah. You, you seriously have a, a travel show where you go around and eat stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd kill myself too. <laughs> what, a, what a horrible life. Yeah, it, please wax more fantastic about how shitty your life isn't. Anyway, he's dead. So, yeah, we actually have a clip from, uh, because I, I remember that movie from uh, uh, The Decline of Western Civilization. How did you get the reputation that you have? Oh, yeah. I guess we used to do stuff. I mean, back, you know, it was good to have that kind of reputation then, you know, but um, not anymore, because now we can't play anywhere. <laughs> Tell me, why, how, how is it that you're always getting hurt? Well, first I did on purpose. Yeah. To keep from being bored. <laughs> He's come out of shows with huge scrapes and scratches and claw marks all over him and just pouring blood, but it always looks a lot worse than it is. What's the worst time you ever got hurt? Maced. Mm, the whisking. I cut my foot <laughs> open. Oh, God, that would be the worst of the whiskey. I came downstairs to do an encore, and then I jumped on a half a broken glass like that, and I I had to get, like, 30 stitches. I was standing, like, right in front, and I was looking at his face, and, and, like, you ended up sitting down on the ground, and you were holding your foot like this, and you looked at it, and and you just started going, "Ah," you know, and then you stopped playing and stuff, and (laughs) running around trying to find your stitches. I love how messed up they are. We were like, oh, blood. This just looks like a girl who worked at a comedy club and wouldn't return my texts when I was 25. <laughs> she just went home with the feature act? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah, Darby Crash. And uh, yeah, if you ever want to check that one out. But where can we check a lot out some of your music? I Again, I want to let people know before we get into this other ad read because I want your ad to go out there. I, you know, the... <laughs> The PyTasters.com will keep you abreast of all pie taster happenings. Um, like I said, we um, uh, got some shows coming up and um, we're working on some new stuff. Uh, Joe Gittleman from the Boston's uh, we've recorded one of a song that he wrote. And we're working on a video for that. Um, yeah, we're always got something cooking. I want to, I, I want to get you to play on the show, but I, I don't have the room and I don't know if you have the, the, uh, you know, Figure something Self out. Self-esteem. <laughs> oh, no, we'd love to. Uh, we, we just need to book some shows in Texas and then... Oh, dude, you yeah. should. We got to yeah. get you... Next we time definitely. we're coming through, we'll we'll stop by and just build in a day to hang out with Dave. Oh, dude, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, and before we get into a couple more stories, we got to talk about this. Have you wondered just exactly how to take our politicians... Uh, I don't understand why they word these. It's actually how it's worded. And I don't want to... Look, at 8 o'clock tonight, you can watch a really great documentary that Glenn put together that I really enjoy. Uh, we Obviously, by the time this airs, it's going to already be seen. But you should check it out. It's actually called uh, Bought and Paid For. And uh, I let... it's a Blaze original. It's an original show that they put together. And it's tonight, which was 8 p.m., Easter. I have to, do I pretend this is live? Wednesday, it is live, guys. It just aired. Everybody loved it. Wednesday at 8 p.m. <laughs> Eastern for a live preview event. Glenn's actually hosting tonight and James Poulos. Uh, it's followed by the live premiere, like I said, of Bought and Paid For, How, po- How Politicians Get Filthy Rich, streaming live on YouTube and Blaze. Uh, check it out. Um, I've got to watch a little bit of it today. It's fantastic. Head over to youtube.com slash blaze TV to watch it. You can subscribe to Blaze TV as well. It's a really, really, really fascinating look into something that I that we've constantly talked about, how all these people are worth millions and millions of millions, some billionaires, yet they're supposed to be on a servant's paycheck. Well, not a servant, but, you know, a public servant. 
so they serve the public, but then they're worth millions and they do insider trading. I gave away one of the secrets. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> bought and paid for. How Politicians Get Filthy Rich, it just aired. Go, you can watch the replay. It's really great. Glenn did a fantastic job. Check it out. I, and also, QB, Quarter Black. Quarter Black, while we're at it. <laughs> Quarter Black is going to be places. It's going somewhere. <laughs> hey, I wanted to get into this, Angela. What was the video that you found? Because you know more about... Uh, I should have just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little off today. Um, so you know about beating men <laughs> who uh, want to be dirty piggies. <laughs> yeah. I know a little bit. <laughs> okay. So what happened with this Howard Stern writer? Okay. So I, I believe she was actually Benji's girlfriend, Elisa. Okay. Yes. She was like a big uh, personality on the Stern show in yes. the earlier years. Yeah, yeah. Back in the, when in it was the, good. Back when people enjoyed the show. Yes, yeah. yeah. So she was arrested for beating what appeared to be her boyfriend on a, she was doing a live stream in her car. Um, they got into a physical altercation. People saw it on the road, saw it on the live stream. So they called the police and the police intervened. She was arrested, as you can see her mugshot there. But a lot of people don't know that this is actually a pay pig situation. And what a pay pig is, is a guy who has really low self-esteem who pays you to be mean to him. That's right. Yes. You Which know. Is, ooh, yeah, it's how you got the job here. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Shut up. I'm sorry. Go on. <laughs> Give me two hundred dollars. She almost broke my nose. Do we have a? <laughs> do we have a video of uh, of the the actual, live stream the abuse that happened in the car? I do. Because honestly, when you read it, it's everybody siding with him, which seems a bit odd. I mean, you know, different sentences that he. Sir, I'm sorry uh, about this. Oh. Don't talk. Don't fucking talk. Uh, yes, sir, He's very really upset. So like that. It, he today. gives her money uh, to punch so him. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, but, but in this yeah, case, he so, wasn't expecting it. Yeah, she's and that's. Coming, oh. But it goes on. He, like, yes. starts pulling at her hair. She's getting oh. mad at him. I mean, we should show that. We, I mean, just show the context of what happens. He ends up getting pissed. He's calling her the C word. Pulling, like, he's going to do much worse if he was more of a man. I shouldn't say more of a man, but bigger. So it ends up being this. You can cut it now. Okay. It gets too much. But. Uh, that's what people see, but they don't understand. There's actually right after it, I'm like, there has to be some context to this. So I look and I find all these videos where he's a complete dick in every way possible to like this one woman and a lot of women. So then I find out from her that this is a situation where he does pay this woman to behave like this. So it, what do you think? Is it her fault? And she's driving. You don't, you don't pull a driver's hair. I was hoping for the car to crash and for them both to die. That's my hope too. When I was watching that, and you know, even before I had the context, uh, there's no skinny armed weirdo. That's, I hate that. There's just something so off about that guy. He said that he had 17 figures in his bank account, and you're like, sure, you don't. It, you, you don't even apparently understand. he's a millionaire yeah well that's what he says but i mean no, I apparently he he's a quadrillionaire 17 17 is an absurd wow. <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Yes. he's like i have 17 figures what do you do losers it's like i don't know we don't lie about numbers like that mm. we count yes <laughs> so yeah she was arrested and uh, somebody who's watching the live stream actually called the cops so the officers kind of pulled up a little bit right behind them, but they feel that uh, Eliza, is that her name? Elisa. Elisa was the aggressor and arrested and booked uh, for domestic battery. And Angela read this, the part where it's the paper. Oh, I shouldn't keep reading. <laughs> that's, that's, but he was asking for it, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. He's, he's for it. You're paying this woman. I mean, you're, they're both, like you said, they're both terrible. You know, the fact that they both survived is uh, an atrocity, but... If in a perfect world, and, and what's a safe word? How is she supposed to know that this has gone beyond <laughs> yeah. what he was paying for? I think it's you, know? you almost broke my nose when he starts <laughs> bleeding. <laughs> His glasses are broken. It's like when I pull your hair aggressively, like I would another woman. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh God! I hate people so much. <laughs> we have a a new, a new movie coming out. I'm actually kind of excited about it, and I'll go ahead and admit it. Uh, well, as soon as I find those papers, we're going to get right into it. It is about Amy Winehouse. Oh. And uh, were you a fan? Queen. Yeah, yeah, dude, she was incredible. I uh, I love the fact that she had that 
basically 1960s Motown sound. And what, in the mid 2000s? Yeah, just was not expecting that to, to you know, be a thing and be as popular as it was. It, it became, I think, one of the largest selling albums in the United States, let alone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over in, in England. And uh, Back in Black uh, tells the story of Amy Winehouse with the role of Winehouse played by uh, Marisa Abella. Jack O'Connell plays her charismatic, no good husband and addicted enabler, uh, Blake Fielder Civil, who was, in fact, all of those things. Uh, Black, uh, Black to Black is uh, described as an urgent. I thought it was called. It's way wrong on the name. Ca that's called a typo. Oh, is it? Yes. So I was right this <laughs> back time. Back to yes. Black. I thought it was Back to Black. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Because Back in Black had to be an ACDC <laughs> movie. And, and Black to Black just sounds like a. a a rock Kevin Hart buddy comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an urgent, warm, heartfelt dramatization scripted by, uh, what well, we can watch a second of it, right? We can, we can, I can play the trailer, but you guys are going to have to add commentary. Okay. To Cause she died of, uh, you know, people that I'm sure, you know, but in, she died at the age of 27, the 27 club back in 2011 of alcohol poisoning. Let's take a look. I want people to hear my voice. The problem I have, I don't mind it being and grand, but I just hope it doesn't follow every single trope and cliche of all of these movies. Like, what are the, like, what are those? Well, the the trailer is a good omen. Basically, her starting by saying, I just want to make people hear my voice. Like, that's not, <laughs> it's a bizarre thing that no one probably said in life. No. And then... You know, and then it's like, I hope I make it, then you make it big immediately. Like, well, they, this just always look like Ernest Walk Hard. Yes, they do. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I was just thinking that, yeah. That's all it is. And that's. Someone you think that movie would have killed that, but. No. And I want to I wanna watch it, but it's exactly what at parts you think it is. And then it's this part where it's like, oh, she's really hit it big. Oh, number one around the world. It's crazy. Look how big you've gotten. But uh oh. No, she loves her dad, but is she doing drugs? Even though she's been singing, I don't want to go to rehab right. since the start. And the, <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> like, I don't think we're getting. And now she's running, and it's like, like that. When she's laying with the guy, just she's running away from addiction. Yes, and she's okay. and she doesn't. I guess no matter how hard you run, and then she's laying with him, going, "I want to be more than a singer. I want to be." A mother, and I want to be. And it's like you didn't have this conversation. You were just like, "Is that beer? Mm. <laughs> Cigarettes? I please. think I want some more of that. Yes. I like more beer. I wanted to be a mother until I destroyed my womb yeah. with <laughs> liquor." Yes, it just is. I think I can handle another one. <laughs> Spoiler alert: She can't. Now, well, and I, I feel bad that the real one died. I just hate that the they always take the version. That's been made a thousand times and try to, I, it's like you said, it's walk hard. Mm -hmm. It's just, oh, you don't want to do these drugs, do we? Mm. I, I think I do. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to do these drugs, Amy. They're going to make all your problems go away. <laughs> make sex even better. Yeah. <laughs> and you that's never. Just, well, I mean, that's just Hollywood never, now. And it all seems like it's written by AI. It does. And it's uh, and you never once paid. And for it's drugs. not. And it's technically not. It's just. It's not even rebooting. Well, it's just taking the same script, and it's like take Johnny Cash's name out and put Amy Winehouse's name. I was just gonna say they're like, and now you know maybe we can make it longer, and then we can do an entire show, uh, you know, about mini series. Yes, a mini series. Oh, okay. We should do our own. Netflix with this. All we right. should. Which do one for you? I'd love to. Yes. Let's make it more real. And actually, let's make it over the top. It'll be, it'll be called the, <laughs> the Pie Tasters and Rollins. <laughs> Sorry. We've got true stories that would make it seem like they're made up. So That's what you want, though, in a band. Let's spitball. Yeah. I, th I think you should do... I, I think that's why I liked... I actually liked Almost Famous. Oh, yeah. When it came out, it was the version that wasn't necessarily real, but it just felt like it was, like of a band that was that. What everybody thinks a, a band would be like. Yeah. Right. And like, even when the plane's going down and it's just like, I'm gay. And then it just steadies <laughs> out. <laughs> it's so well done. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, if you saw more bands being that open and putting out something like that, like this is our real story, you'd be more interested. Because even though like the I Am the Golden God, I believe that was Zeppelin or taking it off yeah. of... Uh, 
maybe Pink Floyd, I can't remember, but yeah, when he just jumps off the house on acid into the pool, like there were like little pieces from the real rock world that made it in there. And that's what, I mean, for me, like I love music. Like what you guys do is astonishing. I could never do it. I have no rhythm and I have no ability, but I go to so many concerts because it's just, it's mind blowing. Right back at you. Yeah. If, if I could write a joke, I'd be in a much better position than paying oh, ten no, guys you, to play you, horns. You'd be us. Mm. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> That's great, though. But it's always the, you know, the grass is greener kind of thing. It is. And I think that there's at least a healthy respect between artists when they see that. And I think for some reason, comics and actors and, you know, musicians kind of always want to do that other thing, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and sometimes they're better at that other thing. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I don't know what that sound is. It's music. It's music. Is the band here? <laughs> Are they warming up? Oh, it might be for the show they're going to be doing. Yeah. That is back in two hours ago because this show's live let's go to <laughs> the end us, of the I world <laughs> well <laughs> they're playing us out wow. it's astonishingly rude mm -hmm. 99 cents <laughs> only stores uh, are closing 371 locations nationwide so I'm very sorry for all the people that just got here from the border what 99 cent stores would you have prevented the stores from having what <laughs> what 99 cent store items would have prevented the stores from having to close? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear because there's someone there's playing, playing music. music. Mm. Yes. <laughs> what items? If the keeps on giving. All right. <laughs> What's an item at a 99 cent store? Let's just call it that. Matt? Yep. Gwyneth Paltrow vagina scented candles. All right. Angela? Ed Asner boner pills. <laughs> <laughs> they make you softer. <laughs> a man. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg queef flavored Pop Tarts. Ooh. <laughs> Delightful. And a waxy. I'm going to say any book uh, written by someone who works here. <laughs> no. <laughs>